Okay, so you've decided that uh, that you want to build one of these things. Or maybe you're just kind of curious as to what all goes into it, how difficult it may or may not be, um, materials, techniques, approach, whatever, that you might need to take in order to build one of these things. Well, I'm going to go over all that. Obviously, the most important thing is that you either have a 3D printer or you have access to a 3D printer. And honestly, I mean, if you're into any kind of model building and things like that, then uh, I really, really highly recommend getting one. There is a learning curve. It's not that big of a learning curve. And prices and quality and reliability for these things over the years have come down so much. Um, if you're any kind of a, a hobbyist who likes modeling things, they're a great little asset to have. Um, like I said, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's really, honestly, my opinion anyway, it's not that big a deal. Um, I've gotten a lot of use of mine out of the past four, almost five years that I've had one. I love it, and I uh, haven't regretted it for a moment. It's been a great uh, uh, alternative way to get a hold of some things, make some things that you may not otherwise be able to get if you didn't have a 3D printer. Uh, and then, you know, once you get comfortable with all that kind of stuff and comfortable with 3D modeling, which it's it doesn't have to be difficult, to be honest with you. This was really not a difficult thing to model, to be totally honest. Um, once you get comfortable with all that stuff, then you can do kind of what I've done here, which is you design and produce stuff that just plain doesn't even exist. You know, I know it's not as it's not as good. It's not as real, I guess, as having you know, like a like a, an official product, like a trouble bubble from Hasbro. That, of course, would be um, the uh, the ideal situation. Um, that's that's what I would like. If Hasbro comes out with a trouble bubble, I will be the first person in line to buy one, no doubt whatsoever. But until such time, this is this is what I have, and I'd like to build actually a couple or few more of these things. Um, anyway, let's get into what that actually entails and what it takes to print them out, put them together, and then finish the whole thing. It's really not difficult. A little bit of uh, uh, foreshadowing there. Okay, so here are all the pieces, with the exception of the bubble, which we will get to. Here are all of the pieces that go into the construction of, uh, of this trouble bubble. We are going to be gluing the whole damn thing together. And when I say gluing, we're going to be using uh, a solvent welding cement. So this is equivalent to like a, you know, like plastic model cement, like you used to put together, you know, plastic model cars when you were a kid or what have you. Um, this brand of model cement, it's called Plastruct Bonding. Now it says it, it uh, solvent welds styrene and ABS. It does a lot more than just styrene and ABS. This is PLA plastic. It works fantastic for PLA plastic. It works great on PETG plastic. It works great on most types of common plastics that you'll find uh, uh, in action figures, uh, action figure vehicles, 3D printed pieces, and, uh, and what have you. It is my go-to model cement for pretty much bonding pretty much any kind of plastic. And it gives you a solvent weld, okay? So that means it literally welds the plastic together. You have one continuous piece of plastic once you've glued it together, two pieces together using this cement versus using, say, you know, super glue or something along those lines. Super glue doesn't weld anything. Super glue just sort of, it's an adhesive. It bonds it together. This stuff welds it together. So once you, you uh, use this stuff to stick two pieces together, after the stuff evaporates and dries, there's no adhesive left. All you have left is a solid piece of plastic at that point, assuming you do a halfway decent job of uh, cementing the pieces together. And it dries really fast. Um, you know, it's bonded and stuck together within, you know, minutes takes a good probably 24 hours to fully dry and solidify, um, but uh, uh, you get a pretty quick tack together um, uh, when you use this stuff to assemble it. Um, another product, like um, if you can't find this stuff, if you run out of this stuff, you need something else. I found something else that's basically the same type of stuff. I think chemically it's actually the same type of a solvent uh, is uh, is this. Let me see if I can get this all in frame here. So side grip, 
acrylic uh, solvent welding cement. Um, this is very fast set. Again, very you know, it says a working time of one minute. I, honestly, I think that's generous. It's probably less than that. Um, fixture time of two minutes, 80% strength in 24 hours. I would say that 80% strength in 24 hours is probably accurate, but the working time is actually really fast. This stuff evaporates super quick, okay? So about that, I want to say that um, when you are using this stuff, I basically use this can to refill that bottle. When you're using this stuff, when you're gluing anything with this stuff, you know, this little bottle has a, has a brush on the bottom of the cap. That's what I use to apply it to the parts. Don't leave the cap sitting off of this thing. This stuff evaporates so quickly, it's going to rapidly disappear out of your bottle and it's going to be floating around in the air. And this is also not the best stuff to be breathing in high concentration, especially if you're in an enclosed area. So use this stuff in a place with a fair amount of ventilation and do not leave that cap off of the bottle. You will see me put the cap back on the bottle and just sort of loosely sit it there. Maybe I'll give it like a little bit of a turn. Uh, okay, but you're not going to see me leave it open like that because it will evaporate very rapidly. And basically you're wasting solvent and you're also letting all that stuff get off into the air, um, which is not going to be good for you long term. So try to minimize how much of that stuff just blows off into the air. Um, about the 3D printing process for these parts. These parts here for this particular copy of this that I'm producing, these are all printed in PLA plastic. You can print in ABS, PETG, PLA, basically whatever kind of plastic you're comfortable printing in. But PLA works just fine. Um, I used a 100 micron or 0.1 millimeter layer height uh, for all of these parts, which gives me a pretty fine layer height and uh, uh, makes the uh, layer lines, um, they're not invisible but they're pretty low key. They're not super obvious. If you go with a higher, a taller, thicker layer height than uh, 100 microns or a tenth of a millimeter, they're going to be much more obvious. Uh, you're also not going to get as fine of a finish. You're not going to get as high resolution finish on the uh, various shapes and contours and details. Um, you can certainly go thinner than 100 microns. You can go 50 microns if you want to go that route. But then you're also, uh, um, you're improving the detail, but you're also really increasing the amount of time that it takes to, uh, uh, to produce these parts, to print these parts. Now, if you just want the utmost in detail and surface finish right off the printer, print with the lowest layer height that your printer will accommodate. I could print this at 50 microns if I wanted to. And to be honest with you, I think one of these days I might just do that just to see how good it can actually turn out. But at 10 microns, and I realize that some of the stuff might be blindingly bright and it might be difficult to see the, uh, uh, the detail on these unpainted pieces, at uh, 100 micron layer height or 10th of a millimeter layer height, I'm pretty happy with a finish that I've been able to achieve. And uh, I will paint, every one of these pieces will be painted uh, uh, as I assemble it or after I assemble certain portions of it. And uh, some of that paint will actually help to smooth out those layer lines. And there are some instances where I want, might do a fair amount of sanding or filing, like on this control stand portion. I'll leave this inner recessed area probably unsanded. I'll just leave it the way it is. That doesn't bother me too much. But on these higher, flatter surfaces, I'll actually run a file back and forth, which I've actually already done for the most part. Run that back and forth to get that fairly smooth. Um, I will clean up some of the edges and some of the sides to help smooth them a little bit. Um, sometimes when you 3D print parts, you get a little bit of, uh, 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 I'll call it an elephant foot type of a spread, a little bit of a spread at the bottom edge. And you got to take that off with a file or you take it off with a knife or sandpaper or something along those lines. So, you know, just like any other 3D printed piece, you take the parts off and you do a little bit of cleanup work on them. Um, it's relatively minor for this though. I tried to optimize the design for 3D printing, meaning um, I didn't want to sacrifice aesthetics for the sake of making it 3D printable. Uh, and I also wanted to, to the extent that I could, minimize the need for support material. Um, if you are not a 3D printer user or not terribly familiar with the process, support material is 
uh, required to hold up a part as it's being printed. For example, when this part, and this is the upper portion of the uh, rear structure of, the, uh, of the, the bubble, the body of the bubble itself. When I print this part, I print it in, uh, I print it in this configuration. Okay, so it's kind of like an arch. Now, if you look on the inside here, you can see a little bit of a, a rough finish. I need to work on smoothing that out a little bit. That's where that support material built up and contacted uh, the, uh, the inside of this part as it was printing. You know, think of a 3D printer as a computer-controlled hot glue gun, so to speak. Well, you can't print in midair. There has to be something underneath that the nozzle can squirt the plastic onto. It can't print in midair. So what happens is the 3D printer will use support material, which is a, uh, a low-strength, temporary lattice of plastic that it will build up that gives the 3D printer something, a, a, a solid enough surface to print onto so that uh, it doesn't just drop right down to the surface. It basically helps to hold it up. Think of it as a scaffold, so to speak. Uh, and then once the printing operation is done, you just rip that scaffold off of the 3D printed part and uh, you should be good to go. You got to play with those settings a little bit. You know, the support material you want to be sufficient to hold up the uh, molten plastic during the printing process but then ideally rip away cleanly from the part when you're done so that it doesn't leave this scarring as uh, as it's commonly called uh, so you got to play with those settings a little bit but all that being said i tried to design this thing to minimize the need for supports and uh, and things along those lines um, and for the most part really about the only thing that really requires much support at all is this piece here and we could even I could probably even reduce the amount of support required if I cut this piece up a little bit more into one or two more pieces um, to eliminate altogether the need for uh, support material possibly but it's a catch-22 um, that just means that you have more pieces that you have to glue together at the end it means you have more glue seams that you need to smooth off and sand and file when all said and done so yeah, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. Or, you know, it's uh, uh, it's not a perfect solution per se. Um, finally, as far as assembly goes, you will notice if you, uh, if you actually download these from Thingiverse, this design, which, <laughs> by the way, I guess I should say, if you look in the description below, there's a link to a web page on thingiverse.com where you can download the 3D model files to print out your very own trouble bubble, you know, for free. You know, you, you, well, the printing, it's not going to be free, but you can download the files for absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I really want to see people download the files and print this thing out and produce it and post pictures of what they made on that page on Thingiverse. And uh, I would love to see people make more of these things. I realize that the bubble portion of it might be a little bit of a challenge or more of a challenge than the rest of it. Um, but regardless, I would love to see people give this a shot and love to even see people's alternative takes on the bubble itself as well. Uh, okay, so back to the actual building action. The um, approach we're going to take here... And what's been built into the design, as you'll notice on the back sides of not all of them, but many of these pieces, you've got holes. And these holes are for alignment. Okay, we're looking at the jet pack. There's a, uh, there's a front half, there's a back half. You see these holes on these flat sides. This is just a piece of raw PLA filament. Okay, so what we're going to do with a lot of these pieces is you put a piece of filament in that little alignment hole. And then you get some snips or you get some needle nose pliers or whatever you might have available. And you snip it off, you know, so you leave two or three millimeters or so of, uh, of that little peg. Oops, that little peg sticking up out of that hole. And what that's going to help you to do is align these two halves when you actually go to assemble them. I'm working behind the camera, it's a little bit tougher. <laughs> there we go. It helps you to get things lined up. 
and keep them lined up so that when you actually apply the cement and you apply the glue, you're not trying to keep the two halves aligned and keep them squeezed together at the same time. Sometimes, you know, you put that stuff in between the two halves, the cement between the two halves, they get a little bit slippery until the adhesive uh, starts to actually bond the pieces together. And while that happens, it's easy to kind of get things, you know, sort of, you know, offset a little bit you know, kind of sloppy. So those alignment pins or alignment dowels, if you want to call them that, are there for just that purpose. And many of these pieces, actually most of these pieces, feature some number of alignment dowels. Here's the bottom of the body of the, uh, of the, the bubble. Here's the top of the body. You can see alignment holes there and there, there and there. Um, the uh, actual control section here, alignment holes on the instrument cluster, and then alignment holes on the rest of the body of the control structure. Even, you know, a, an alignment hole on the bottom of each one of these auxiliary weapons that get stuck to the body um, on, the, uh, on the cannon, on the control stand, on the seat, and what have you. Um, I didn't do it for the missiles. I didn't do it for the missiles because they're actually pretty, they're pretty thin. Um, and I wasn't going to be able to put a very deep alignment hole in there anyway. But, but these uh, uh, missile pieces are so small, it's actually not terribly difficult during the gluing process to keep them lined up correctly while you're waiting for that, uh, that adhesive. Whatever adhesive you decide to use while you're waiting for that adhesive to, uh, to tack up and finally stick. Because once you get a good tack and you know, you're talking like, you hold it for like 30 seconds. If you're using um, uh, solvent welding cement like that, you hold it for 30 seconds or so and, uh, and it'll get a good tack. And then uh, once it's tacked together, you just, you just sit it down and you let it sit for 24 hours a day, what have you, so that it uh, dries nice and solid. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do here is go maybe a little bit uh, a little bit quicker, kind of go fast forward on the actual assembly of some of these pieces, just since it's actually kind of boring. All right, let's do this.
right. So that is all. Haha, -ha, I thought I'd forget, didn't ya? That is, I think, all I'm going to do for today on this. Tomorrow, we are going to work on painting some of this stuff. And then work on, uh, well, before we paint it, like, you know, we'll smooth off some of the seams and edges and gaps. Then we'll work on some painting. And then we'll work on putting this thing together the rest of the way. And then the bubble. All right.